In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make an authentic lasagna bolognese the right way, the way it should be made, the way the Italians have perfected it over the last 500 years. Yes, it will take more time than many other shortcut lasagna recipes you'll find out there, but I promise you it will be worth it. By pouring your heart and soul into this labor of love and honoring an age-old tradition, you too will be able to create something magical your friends and family cannot stop talking about. Let's get cooking. This recipe starts with high quality, authentic ingredients. We've got Parmesan Loreggiano, five and a half cups of whole milk, our sofrito made of carrots, celery, and onion, some San Marzano tomatoes, tomato paste, white wine, only wine that you would drink too, a mix of ground veal, beef, and pork, and no boil oven ready lasagna noodles. Rough chop your carrots, your celery, and your onion, and mince them in the food processor. The food processor is going to be our workhorse in this recipe, saving you loads of prep time. This sofrito is often referred to as the holy trinity in Italian cooking. In some Italian supermarkets, the already prepped sofrito is also labeled gli odori, which translates to actually the smells. We only want to soften the vegetables here, cooking for about four minutes. Atypical to many recipes, we're not going to brown the two pounds of ground meat here, but rather simmer it in one and a half cups of milk. It will take about 20 to 30 minutes to simmer the liquid off. I've also added a rind of parmigiano here just to be extra bougie and also max out that parm flavor. While the milk is cooking off, let's give our star kitchen performer another job to do by adding the 28 ounces of whole San Marzano tomatoes to the food processor. After the milk is almost fully cooked off, add one and a half cups of white wine next. When I talk about embracing slow foods and cooking with love, these are the extra steps I'm talking about. The milk and the wine that we're using will sweeten the meat and make it amazingly tender. There will be no weird chewy sausage bit bites in this lasagna. You know what I'm talking about. The wine will also take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook off. So back to today's star, the often overlooked food processor, to finally grate our Parmigiano Reggiano. We need at least two cups of grated Parmigiano. I never buy Parmesan, I always buy ungrated Parmigiano Reggiano because the quality and flavors are unmatched by the imposter Parmesan. The Slow Foods movement was founded in Italy in 1986 by Carlo Petrini. It's basically anything opposite of fast foods. It's all about using fresh ingredients, honoring culinary traditions, and promoting the local food ecosystem. Parmesan is a false prophet and should not be trusted. But if the cheese says Parmigiano Reggiano on the rind or label, it's required by Italian law to be produced in a specific region, follow specific aging, process, and production requirements, unlike the wild, wild Parmesan West. In my opinion, it's well worth the extra money, not only for the quality, but also to support the local Italian economy, which is desperately trying to preserve age-old traditions. In my house, I make this recipe for special occasions. I can still remember 10 years ago on Christmas Eve when my wife and I were hosting dinner for the first time. Grandma Lee and her husband came over along with many others and we enjoyed this lasagna bolognese. Ed, Grandma Lee's husband, took one bite. Now Ed was a well-traveled man, loved food and was a good cook himself, but he took one bite and he turned to me and said, Leo, that's the best lasagna I've ever had in my life. It's moments like these as a home chef that make you feel most alive. Now, Ed's no longer with us today, rest in peace. And I hope wherever he is, he remembers that moment as vividly as I do. Next up, we're going to make our bechamella. Starting with a roux, we have four tablespoons of unsalted butter and a quarter cup of flour. Similar to the Caesar salad recipe, whisking constantly is critical to the technique here. Also similar to the Caesar salad, slowly drizzling four cups of whole milk is very important. The French and the Italians fight about the origins of this sauce, but I'm a full-blown, biased Italian fanboy and believe it was invented in Tuscany and brought to France by Caterina de' Medici in the mid-16th century. And then, in the 17th century, King Louis the Great and Louis de Bechamel carried out an egregious act of stolen valor and laid claim to the origins, citing Bechamel as one of the seven mother sauces of French cooking. We reject misinformation on this channel, so let the record state the facts only. After you have added the four cups of whole milk, bring the mixture to a boil, add your salt and spices, and reduce to a simmer for roughly 10 minutes. Like peanut butter and jelly, nutmeg and bechamela are a match made in heaven. We always start with whole nutmegs and use a microplane for maximum freshness and flavor. She can be a fussy, temperamental mother sauce though, so make sure you whisk regularly and scrape down the sides with a rubber spatula to prevent any burning. You will know when it's ready. Once the wine has cooked off, it's time to add the two tablespoons of tomato paste and combine, and then add the crushed whole San Marzano tomatoes to the ground meat. 
Similar to the Parmigiano Reggiano, I'm using true San Marzano tomatoes here. In order to maintain quality standards and preserve tradition, these tomatoes must be grown in a very specific region and use the native seeds from the original San Marzano strain. The Italian government has prevented genetically modified tomato strains to receive the Denominazione di Origine Protetta label seen on certified San Marzano plum tomatoes in the grocery store. Similar to Parmesan, there are many imposters and false prophets out there trying to earn a quick buck and charge a premium while not adhering to quality and tradition standards. Legend has it that these tomatoes were brought to the Naples area in the 18th century as a gift from the vice royalty of Peru and grown in the fertile volcanic soil surrounding Mount Vesuvius. Let's check back in on the bechamella. It's almost ready. Can you tell the difference? I am going to add one non-traditional ingredient here, which we will use at the very end. Perdona mi padre, for I have sinned. I'm going to grate some whole milk mozzarella to use during the last step of lasagna assembly. The ragu is ready after simmering for only 15 more minutes, and this is exactly how you want the bechamella to look, velvety and luxurious. You should have about six cups of ragu and three and a half cups of bechamella to use. Add three quarters of a cup of bechamella to the ragu, now for my favorite part, the piece de resistance of the love you have put into this recipe so far, assembling the lasagna. Add one cup of the ragu bechamela mixture to the bottom of your pan. Now repeat after me. One and a quarter cup of ragu, one third of a cup of bechamela, and a third of a cup of parmesan for each layer. Repeat, repeat, repeat. We're going to use 15 of these no-boil noodles in total, creating five layers of heaven. When I was 13, my family lived in Florence, Italy for a year, and I went to an Italian public school at Scuola Masaccio in Professoressa Cecchetti's class, Seconda B. School would only last until around one every day, and I would walk home and smell meals like this wafting from the kitchen windows made by the Italian nonnas waiting to feed their families during the daily riposo, where almost the entire city would shut down and break midday to enjoy delicious food prepared by and enjoyed with their closest friends and family. Sound familiar? I can remember one of the first times I fell in love with traditional lasagna bolognese. There's a very busy and touristy leather market in the heart of Florence's city center at La Piazza di San Lorenzo. It's bustling and filled with fancy trattorias fighting for tourists' business. But I remember seeing the locals go to this older, more dilapidated looking place. More of like a large kitchen counter with an older Italian lady cooking authentic recipes for the vendors who were not able to go home with their families. You had to get there before she ran out of whatever you wanted to order, and every time I make this lasagna, I still remember standing in line as a young boy with the leather merchants waiting for an amazing slice of lasagna bolognese. I wish I could remember her name. The final top layer is the remaining bechamel and a layer of mozzarella cheese. Spray a sheet of aluminum foil with nonstick spray, cover and bake at 425 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes until bubbling. Remove the foil, increase the heat to 450 and bake for another 15 minutes until it's brown. Something like this. Now let this molten Vesuvius lava mixture rest for 15 minutes before cutting it and serving. and watch as everyone eats in majestic silence. <laughs>